Hello. Um, so first of all, uh, I just want to extend on the point, which seems to never be clear enough, is that the affirmative side isn't, um, <clears throat> that um, since the negative side argued that, to Bridget, that um, she didn't address the statement that was that our current system is already making great progress, it is making great progress. Um, the affirmative side isn't arguing the effectiveness of the current system, only that it should be federally mandated so all public high schoolers are receiving the same comprehensive ed education about sex. So um, the negative side also um, brought up the point on how um, <clears throat> the system is good enough. State, for example, saying, do we really need to fix it? Is it really that significant? And they back this up stating that the fact that, that people r rarely brought uh, opt out of these lessons or that uh, HIV and teen pregnancies are, have been dropping. We also stated that um, in large urban high schools, the percentage that taught relevant and accurate information regarding contraceptives uh, range about 73%, and that's great, but teens in the United States are uh, far more likely to give birth than in any other industrialized country in the world since there was, um, because I only spoke of Netherlands, but um, like I just said, the United States is far more likely to, um, the teens in the United States are far more likely to give birth than any other industrialized country in the world. Um, U.S. teens are two and a half times as likely to give birth as compared to teens in Canada, and uh, around four times as likely as teens in Germany or Norway, and almost ten times as likely as teens in Switzerland. Um, researchers found that among 12 to 25 year olds in the Netherlands, mostly that they, um, Oh yeah, the, the point that I had brought up before, where um, by comparison, 66% of the sexually active American teens here would have waited. That's a big percent. That's something that's very important that I'm sure would have changed if our lives, our comprehensiveness had changed. I also wanted to tackle the negative side's claim where um, they said that um, the issue that we brought up about the LGBT uh, being at high risk, uh, the negative side stating that there are already measures in place to help contradict this, uh, giving information such as, uh, as Daniel said, uh, the CDC has given one, uh, $11 million per year since 2011 to 34 organizations that specifically try to help those gay and bisexual groups receive HIV testing. And uh, that's great, but it didn't change anything on their sex education or how they teach it. So uh, a 2016 Huffington Post states that out of the 50 states and one district, only nine states have any form of positive LGBTQ uh, inclusive education, uh, sexual education. A number that is very disheartening and uh, for the overall being of many youth, uh, for there being so many youth in the United States. It also stated that the young LGB girls are more likely to become uh, pregnant than heterosexual uh, crushing female youth and are more likely to contract an STI. So me and my partner Bridget once again uh, proposed to uh, our proposition which is that comprehensive sex education should be mandatory for all public high schools in the United States. Thank you. <laughs>